Good morning, everybody. My name is Fabio Sacchetti. I work in the Marine Institute for the Informa program. And today I am going to give you a quick overview of uh, a project that we have been managing for a couple of years. The project is about the development of uh, new high tech solutions for seaweed resource assessment. So, first of all, a little bit about seaweed. Uh, seaweed cultivation market size worldwide is estimated to be uh, between 11 and 14 billion uh, this year, last year. And it is projected to be about 50 to 60 billion in 2040. So it is a fast growing market. In Ireland, the Ireland is the third highest producer of uh, seaweed in Europe behind Norway and France. And approximately 40,000 tons of wild seaweed are harvested annually. Uh, it is a raw ingredient for cosmetics, biopharmaceutical, human and animal food and feed, and it has a future potential for many sectors, including carbon sequestration. Many compounds are discovered and extracted every year, so it's just a very fast growing market. Approximately, there is between 150 and 300 um, harvesters in the country from small families harvesting their local beach to more bigger commercial entities. So as the market increases over the next couple of decades, it is important to introduce the sustainability into the market. The seaweeds are, are an important habitat, often found in the marine protected areas, and especially in conservations. They provide shelter for many uh, species. They play a key role in coastal ecosystems. They help to protect the coastline and reduce coastal erosion, and also help to increase carbon sequestration. So it is very important to protect uh, this habitat as well. As such, sustainability must underpin the licensing regime for seaweed harvesting. There is the need to develop st standard methodologies for resource distribution and biomass assessment, which will ensure the sustainable development of the sector, define sustainable level of harvesting, and minimize environmental impact. So this become a reality in 2018 when the National Marine Planning Framework report was issued. And within the report, there is a particular section about seaweed and specifically, the Marine Institute is challenged with a couple of aspects. One is to better understand the socio-economical aspect of the sector, and two, to improve the way the resource is uh, monitored, mapped, and assessed. And uh, in particular, Infomar within the Marine Institute was challenged with the mapping aspect because we are the uh, mapping experts, if you want. The, uh, even before uh, the report was issued, we already had a PhD student in, in house in AMS that was already looking at the technology aspect of mapping seaweed, uh, looking at drones, looking at multispectral spectral cameras. And one thing that the PhD student looked at is also the commercial availability of services. And it is quickly discovered that uh, neither in Ireland or the UK, there are, there are no companies specialized in mapping uh, this type of resource. So that sparked interest, obviously. Uh, we went back to the e European Maritime Fisheries Fund looking for funding to develop this further. And we eventually were granted 250,000 euro and that were used, that they're currently used to do two things. One, we did an infrastructure tender in 2020, which I will show you in a minute. And then we also engaged with the Enterprise Island uh, uh, within the SBIR funding scheme. So first of all, a uh, quick overview of what we procured. So we did a, a tender early last year. We procured both an, a perspectral camera and uh, a commercial drone. While currently most companies are using both the special camera to do all sorts of surveys uh, with drones, uh, we decided that half spectral is really the way forward for many, many sectors, for many, many things. Uh, Upper spectral is, is more Resolute, it brings much more data into, into the, uh, the equation and the potential are really endless with hyperspectral solutions, but it brings also challenges, in particular the amount of the volume of data that these kind of cameras are, 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 are acquiring is quite substantial. And we procured also a commercial drone, as you can see here, which we will need to uh, fly the camera. But more importantly, we used the majority of the funding to engage with Enterprise Islands through the Small Business Innovation Research funding mechanism. So SBIR is a pre-commercial, multi-phase procurement method. It enables public bodies to stimulate innovation when goods and services are currently not available in the marketplace. 
in simple terms, if a, a public body needs to do something, needs to procure something, but there is nobody out there that can actually deliver, this is a mechanism to provide funding to companies to become competent into niche markets, to become competent in delivering these kind of services. And the beauty of this system is that the companies, they do retain their fee, so eventually in the future, they can also commercialize it. So what we did, we developed a challenge and the challenge was then issued through a tender mechanism early last year. And the challenge that we issued uh, is to develop a technology focused data acquisition, processing and analytical solution that is capable of delivering a rapid and cost effective intertidal species level seaweed distribution assessment at a regional scale. So it is important to, uh, to, to, to look at some of these keywords because it's very critical that the companies deliver the solution that we want the companies to develop has to be rapid, has to be quick, you know, can be delivered in, in a matter of weeks. And it has to be cost effective. So having, for example, 50 marine ecologists on kayaks or ribs and GoPros on the beach looking at seaweed distribution is not what we're looking for. We want something a little bit more high tech. We also want the solution to be able to discriminate between species. So it's not enough for a solution to just say, yes, there is seaweed or no, there is no seaweed. We know the solution to tell us, yes, there is that species of seaweed in that particular area. And also the solution has to be scalable from local to, to regional scale. So as I mentioned, the, the, the funding comes from both Enterprise Island and uh, the Marine Institute. Uh, the total pot is about 300,000, it, it is 300,000 euro, and the Marine Institute component comes from EMFF funding. The fund is managed by uh, ourselves in the uh, AMS group in Infomar, and uh, I am the manager of the SBIR together with Thomas Fury. So we issued the tender last year and seven consortia applied for the, for the tender, and we selected three of them, the AAT consortia, Fathom consortia, and the Techor Marine consortia. So quick overview of these companies, AAT is an ag aerial agri-tech uh, specialized in all sorts of uh, things. Um, they're specialized in flying fixed wing drones with multi-spectral sensor, and they provide services for forestry and agriculture. And now they will also include services for mapping seaweed. The Teco Marine uh, Consortia, uh, Teco Marine is, is a Dublin company specialized in all sorts of marine services, and they joined forces with Geoaerospace and NUIG in Galway. And then Fathom, is an IT company and they uh, joined forces with uh, two groups in the new IG and also Aramara Theo, which is the biggest commercial harvester in the country. So I will give you a quick overview of their solutions. And I will, I, I have merged AAT and the TechWork Marine Solution because they are very similar. So AAT specialized in uh, flying fixed wing, drone, fixed wing drones with uh, uh, multi-spectral sensors. Uh, the tech group marine was slightly different. They prefer to use uh, uh, multi-rotor drones and uh, airplanes to fly, again, multi-spectral, but also hyperspectral sensors. These high-resolution data collection systems, they're also coupled with uh, uh, satellite remote sensing uh, type of uh, uh, image analysis to, for, to cover the regional uh, uh, aspect of the challenge. The data sets delivered by these platforms are then brought into a GIS environment where they are analyzed using a combination of uh, machine learning, cloud computing, uh, neural network type of algorithms uh, to basically derive uh, seaweed species classifications. And these classifications are then validated through ground truthing work on the, on the shoreline. And then the final data sets are delivered through client-based service platforms like WMS services, or web-based web portals. The Fathom solution instead is a little bit different. The, the solution currently developed by Fathom is, is very different because, uh, well, Fathom is a software company with uh, considerable experience in uh, software development in the cloud. So their approach is mostly focused on using the best satellite images uh, available currently commercially, which can achieve a resolution of few decimeters. And the platform that they are currently developing is totally cloud-based and will avail of uh, the power of Amazon Web Services uh, and will include advanced artificial intelligence and neural network models capable, of, capable to predict the spatial extent and biomass uh, of selected seaweed species with current focus being on the Ascophila nodosa, which is the 
the, 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 the most important commercial uh, seaweed in the country. The final uh, pl platform, the final portal, which will be, will be available to clients through the web, but also through apps, uh, will be able to automatically select the best satellite images for specific area, run the models and generate accurate estimators of seaweed species distribution and biomass. And obviously being the solution completely cloud-based and mostly rely on satellite data, it can be easily applied anywhere else in the world and customized to fulfill different custom needs, customer needs. <coughs> so the companies went through a phase one uh, uh, period, about four months, where they were given a small amount of money, about 30,000, 40,000 euro. And what they did, they, they created a case study. They went on the field and then they demonstrated that they can deliver the, the solution. This is, for example, some data sets acquired by AAT on the Iron Island where they have their commercial partner. So they demonstrated that they can discriminate between seaweed species here on this area, for example. Then Early this year, in January, the, pro, the SBIR went, went into phase two. Basically, we reviewed the results of the uh, phase one, and we decided to bring forward two consortia, AAT and Father Consortia. AAT also expanded the consortia. They brought in Copernicus. They brought in a company from Italy, which is uh, specialized in the remote, marine remote sensing, and, and, and so on. And phase two really has been the... Uh, they, they, they look deeper, they, they, they challenge the technology even deeper, they went on the field more, and now we are toward the end of phase two, and the companies are looking at market analysis, and they are finally commercial, trying to look at co commercializing their solution for future uh, uh, tenders. The phase two will, uh, will be completed in, uh, in December this year. And what the companies have been doing, for example, AAT has been in the field quite a lot. They surveyed all over the country from Mayo, Cork, Kerry, Waterfall, all the way to Malinhead in Northern Ireland. And they really wanted to get a better understanding of seaweed environment. Mapping seaweed is not straightforward. It is a very challenging environment which constantly changes throughout the day, throughout the week, throughout the months. So creating... Um, so understanding these and creating a good knowledge of this kind of environment is important for companies that are flying drones, for example. They also, uh, so, so they learned that they, they had to adapt to the camera system. They changed the type of drones they're flying. They also understood their daily limit, how much kilometer they can cover in, in, in a day, which is important when you are then looking at scaling these at the regional scale. And uh, ultimately, I suppose, uh, we, we also tried to challenge the companies, trying to look beyond the seaweed concept. Uh, so AAT has been looking at potential of mapping uh, salt marshes, for example, which is a key uh, habitat for carbon sequestration. They looked at the potential of using drones to map uh, plastic and to monitor seabirds, marine, marine life, and, and so on. And ultimately, what we have been doing here in the last year, year and a half with these companies to to, to make them uh, capable of uh, tackling multiple challenges. Once the companies have the correct solution, they have cracked, if you want, the uh, cloud computing, the machine learning, the neural network algorithms, and they have the correct technology, the same technology can also be applied to uh, other aspects of the marine environment. Today's seaweed, Tomorrow, it could be salt marshes, sea grasses, marine pollution, and so on. So the companies are biting into these kind of niche markets, and hopefully they will be able to expand their portfolio in the future uh, for multiple uses. So that's pretty much uh, my 10 minutes up. If you have any further questions, you can email me or my, uh, my uh, manager, Thomas Fury, at marine.ie. So thanks for listening, and uh, I hope you enjoy the uh, remaining of the conference.